Hey guys, welcome back to another video and I hope you guys are doing well. Today I have this DirecTV satellite receiver to take apart. Alright, so let's get this cover off. So on the right we have our main logic board and on the left we have our power supply board. Okay, so here's our power supply board. We have the mains input here. So we have our primary side here, which is the side that receives the power from the wall. And we have the secondary side, which supplies the voltages to the rest of the unit. We have a power regulator here. Here is our transformer that is connecting the primary to the secondary side. This has one primary coil that's fed by this primary side here, and it has multiple secondary coils which give out the different voltages that the motherboard requires. And here we have what looks like two transistors, a few caps, and two inductors. Here on the output connector from the power supply you can see they've printed all the different output voltages onto the circuit board so you know what wire is supplying what voltage to the main logic board. Alright so here's our main logic board. On the back here we have our satellite input that would go connect to your satellite on the outside of your house. So we have our satellite input here and the data is going to be highly compressed and it needs to be decoded. This chip is responsible for decoding the compressed information and separating the decompressed data into its different TV channels. So the data would still be encrypted from the TV provider so you have your service provider card here, which has a chip on it that has a special code that is used to de-encrypt the information coming through the satellite, which is done also in this chip. Next, the data is sent over here to our main system on a chip, or SOC. You can see this chip has a heat sink on it. So our main SOC here is responsible for taking in that data and constructing a picture and audio with that data. So this chip constructs the picture pixel by pixel and it sends it out to this DDR memory here. So while the chip here is taking in the information and calculating the different pixels and the different colors and stuff, that information is being sent out to this memory here. The job of this memory is to hold this information until the full frame is calculated and then it is sent back to the chip. Then it takes the data and converts it into the different output types. The audio information would be deciphered in the SOC2, but that information is not sent to the RAM. That is directly sent out to the different outputs. So we have all this hardware and we need software to run it. So right here we have our flash memory. So this chip here contains the instructions and software that the SOC and the other system components use. Now the data on this chip can be erased and rewritten if there was like a software update and they were fixing a bug or something and you downloaded new software, it would clear the memory off this chip and rewrite it and you would have the new software that is not bugged running on the machine now. But there's certain information in this machine that needs to stay there and that can't be erased and rewritten. And that's what this ROM chip here does. This ROM chip here contains system information that is specific for this one unit, such as the manufacturing date, the model number, the serial number, and stuff like that that's just for this unit. Okay, now that we understand how that works, we can take out the boards of our power supply connector here and our ribbon connector that goes to the front panel. This board has screws in here and screws over here. So let's take those out. Okay, now I'm gonna take this board out. All right, so I've got the board out and out of curiosity, I've taken the heat sink off the main SLC here, revealing a nice copper top Broadcom chip. Here's our other Broadcom chip, the satellite receiver. 
and here's the back of the board. This is just really neat looking at all the traces and stuff. You can see all the traces going from the bottom side of the SOC to the memory bank over here. So over here we have the bottom side of our satellite receiver here. And you can see they have this copper structure here with these holes in the board. So what this is for is heat dissipation. Instead of using a heat sink, what they did here was they put holes in the board and they put a copper structure here. Now through every single layer of the board, they're going to have this copper structure here, which helps dissipate the heat. Kind of the same way a heat sink would, but it's just kind of built into the board. Okay, so let's take out this power supply board. Alright, so here's our board. You can see on the bottom here, they've clearly marked the primary and the secondary side of the power supply. These components here are called opto-isolators, and they isolate the primary side from the secondary side of the power supply board. You can see the inputs here for the primary coils and the all the outputs here for the secondary coils. And each one of these coils would have a a different voltage output. Pretty neat. All right, so next thing to do is take off this front cover. Okay, so here's our cover plate. And here's the circuit board. And there's not really much on this. There's just going to be a whole bunch of buttons and LEDs and stuff. You can see pretty much all that's on here is just buttons. Alright, so you can see there's just this little chip here. This is kind of like a little tiny microcontroller that's just responsible for keeping track and uh, signal processing of the button inputs and stuff. And if you look over here for the LED lights here which in indicate what resolution your signal is they are they're actually using transistors here to switch the LEDs on and off which is a neat little detail all right guys so that's about it for this video thanks for watching to the very end and please remember to like comment and subscribe to help support my channel